today um, I want to show you guys how to yeah, perform the input validation algorithm that is described in the RFC 5280 and um, yeah, basically go through it uh, with this exercise. And our task is to verify the authenticity of Bob's certificate on this day because all these certificates are from the past. This is an exercise from my university. The certification path is already shown below. We have Baltimore Cybertrust Group, which is our trust anchor. And then there is the DFN CA and the Crossing CA, and uh, the Crossing CA issued the certificate for Bob. And um, here are some statements about the input variables for the algorithms that are usually the preferences of the uh, person that is trying to validate the certificate of Bob in this case. And all these uh, certificates from the path are listed below here in this uh, in this uh, PDF. We have certificate B, C, F, and G. And um, yeah, um, at first we have to look through the preferences of the validating user and uh, put them as input here. The certification path is already outlined here, and we always omit the self send certificate from the trust anchor here and only put C, F, G. And then we can go on and put in the certification path length, which is obviously one, two, three in this case. Next, we put the date, which is uh, as written above, 2019, August 1st. And then the user initial policy set is uh, the is a list of, of policies that the user accepts. Uh, we only accept certificates if they are issued under that policy. And here it says purple, blue, and policy mappings. So we put purple, blue. Now we have to input the trust anchor information. In this case, the trust anchor is Baltimore cyber CyberRoot. So we put the working public key, the algorithm, and the issuer name of this Baltimore self-signed certificate, because this is our trust anchor. You could also say we put uh, this issuer because it's the same, obviously, because it's Baltimore Cybertrust. Um, 34 CA 3 But uh, it's important that we put um, this public key of the root certificate, because yeah, that's essentially the root certificate which we want to uh, validate or verify the signature in the next certificate with. And uh, then we put an algorithm, SA, and the issuer name, which is Baltimore Cyber Root. Yeah. <clears throat> like this. And then next, we have some more interesting variables, which is uh, initial policy mapping inhibit. This uh, describes whether we, as user, want uh, to accept policy mappings or not in the certification path. And because here it says policy mappings are okay, we put false because it says inhibit. So uh, yeah, we don't want to inhibit it. So this is false. And then next up, we have initial explicit policy. This is a var variable that describes whether we demand that all certificates in the certification path have an explicit policy set. And here it says, we enforce the presence and verification of policies. So we enforce the presence of them. So this is true. And then next up, we have initial any policy inhibit. This is about whether we accept any policy as policy because there is there are, can be certificates that have any policy as policy, but this is still considered an explicit policy. But yeah, so here it says we accept and handle any policy. So it's pretty simple. Let's just fault again because it's inhibit. I can zoom in a little bit. Yeah, and now that we have these input variables, we can uh, go on and start with the actual algorithm and the verification. Verification, and um, here this is the outline, an outline of the algorithm itself, and um, yeah, this is a material from a university at uh, uh, the TU Darmstadt. So I hope it's okay if I use this to go through the algorithm. 
yeah we just we just start here with the initialization we set the valid policy tree to any any um and i want to say this also we i will not uh like uh, build the the policy tree here now because this is it would be too much doing too much at once so we will just go through all the steps and every time something about dealing with policies comes up i would just like skip over it and say yeah we did that it's okay <clears throat> so we do that now we skip over this and then we also skip over this because this is about name constraints and in this uh, course we didn't cover them or at least they like they are never really important and then we get to the next few steps um where we have to check is iex poll this is like the abbreviations are here listed here this is about explicit policy initial explicit policy is this true now we can see yeah it's true so we put this to zero and uh yeah these variables that were set in the initialization are set in uh the first step here, over here zero as I said, then next variable, a poll. This is inhibit any policy, I guess. In up. Oh yeah, of course these names are different because they are set here. So we just have to sort of ah oh, well, well they are over here. Um, e poll, I a poll inhibit is initial any policy inhibit. This is set to false, so we put it to n plus one. N is three. So over here, this is the certificate path of length, certification path length. So this is four. Then next up is policy mapping. This is uh, false. So we also put it to four. Set it to four. Yeah. And then we have working public key algorithm and everything. And we set this according to trust. Trust means like we set it according to our trust anchor. And this means it's the same as, as over here, as we put down as input. So I will just uh, quickly copy this over. And then we have max path length. I don't know if this is explained over here. No, it's not. But it's essentially this the certification path length. We feel, because we want to verify the path that has been given to us, which is this one. And it's it has length three. So if 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 uh, we somehow end up at the fourth certificate, something must have gone wrong. And then we are done with this initialization part, and we continue and set C to the first certificate in our path, which in our case is this one certificate C. It's the path is CFG. So now we are dealing with this certificate. Then. We go on and continue with basic certificate processing. This is fairly easy because we just verify that this certificate is signed with our trust anchor, which is the case. You can verify this manually. This is the public key and it can be verified with it. We verify that uh, we are within its validity date, which is the case because it's set like this. And then it, that it's not revoked. And we are assuming here that it's not revoked, that the issue of this certificate is our trust anchor which is true and that the name constraints are okay that's okay because we said so and then policy extensions we should now essentially process these policy mappings uh, the certificate policy and everything but we skip this in this uh, video so we don't have to do all of this and we just continue here we assume that this is okay and go on after certif basic certificate processing we uh, we check if we are already at like the third step, or we are not. So we continue with prepare for a certificate i plus one. So now we are preparing for this certificate, and we do that. We scroll down here. Contains uh, our now we have to check. Remember, we are still working with this certificate. We have to check if our um, a certificate contains policy mapping extension and it does but we are not handling policies in this video so we just skip over this and go over here now we set the working issue and everything to the certificate subject name from this 
certificate, which is DFNCA. And those are the values that we have to put in here. DFNCA, because this will be the information with which we can verify the next certificate. So we have to take the subject and everything out of the certificate that we just verified so that we can continue working down the the tree, uh, the certification path. Now this is DSA. And then process name constraints. We skip over that, that's okay. The certificate is not self-issued. And then now we, we are supposed to set the those are these three variables essentially. Um, explicit policy mapping to z to the maximum of zero or this minus well, minus one, but this is already zero, so we just keep it at zero. Now next policy mappings. This is this one to z maximum of zero or this one minus one. So we set this one to three because obviously three is larger than zero. And now inhibit any policy maximum of zero and that one minus one. So we set it to that minus one. Now we continue. If require explicit policy is set in C, then, and now we check if, if it's set, and we can see uh, require explicit policy is set to two. So we have to check the minimum, or we have to take the minimum of explicit policy, like the value that we set earlier, which is three. No, it, uh, this one was zero, sorry. This uh, policy is zero, a minimum of this, and what's what's uh, required in this certificate, and it's two. So the minimum stays zero, and we can keep it that way. And then we check if inhibit policy mapping is set in here. That's not set, so we can skip this. And now if inhibit any policy is set, or whether it's set. And now this is set, and it's set to one, and one is smaller than what we have right here. So we have to change this to one. And then we can go on. Is it a CA start? Yes, it is. It's not self-issued. Is our maximum path length, which is three currently, uh, bigger than zero? Yes. And then we reduce it by one because we work through one certificate. So it can be at most two left. And then uh, we check if the path length constraint is set in the certificate that we are currently working with. And it's set to three. So, and we take the minimum of that. So the minimum of two and three is two. So we keep it that way. Then we go on key usage extension is set and it's set and it's allowed to cert uh, sign, like to sign certificates. So that's okay. And then we process other extensions. That's okay, we did all of this. And then we set C to the next certificate path. So now we continue from this certificate to that one. And uh, now we, we are done with the prepare for certificate L plus one step, and we can see that now we are back to basic certificate processing for this one now. So we start here. We check, is this certificate signed with our current working stuff? Yes, it's signed with the CC4, and it's signed by DFM CA. Then we check if we are within that time span. We are. Uh, it's not revoked. The issuer is what we have. I, we just compared that. <clears throat> And uh, the name constraints are okay, we always say that. Then policy extensions process policies. Now we would continue uh, drawing our policy tree, but we don't do that in this video. Uh, we assume that the policy drawing went okay, and then we continue. Now, after that, we go on to, we are still not like, I is still not N, N was three in the beginning. We are now at step two and um, yeah, so we continue with prepare for our certificate. So we are now preparing for this certificate. That means we go through these steps and we verify if we have the policy mapping extension, we have it, but we don't do certificate processing and uh, policy processing in this video. So we skip over all of this. Then we, we uh, set the variables to what we need to process the next certificate because we are preparing for that, right? Then the public key that we have to verify the next certificate with is CA4 BE84. And this is the crossing CA that will issue have issued the next uh, certificate. And yeah, then we can go on. Now again, we name constraints, that's okay. Self-issued, no, it's not. Uh, explicit policy, 
to the maximum of zero or what it for zero minus one. So uh, yeah, it's, it stays zero. We can't go negative. And then policy mappings minus one because uh, two is bigger than zero. And next up is inhibit any policy a maximum of zero and one minus one, so it's zero anyways. And then we continue here. Uh, if require explicit policy is set, is it set? We, we, remember, we are on this certificate right now. Uh, no, it's not set. If inhibit policy mapping is set, that's set. It's zero. So we have to set inhibit policy mapping to the minimum of policy mapping, what it is right now, that's two, and what the value in the certificate is, that's zero. So we set it to zero. <clears throat> and then we continue C and like C this is or C currently. Maybe I should I should have put an arrow or something. This is where we are at right now. It's a uh, is a CA sort. Yes it is. It has the basic constraints, CA true. Self issued, no it's not. Uh maximum path is, is uh or this is like our current path value. It's bigger than uh zero. Then so we have to subtract one of it. And um now we check if the path length constraint is set in C. This is C. Yes, it is set, it's set to zero. So now we have to take the minimum of this value and this value. And obviously zero is smaller, so we take the zero. Now key usage extension, we check if that's okay. That's okay. Wait, where is it? Here. Cert sign. So this one, this certificate is okay for signing other certificate or the public key that's certified in it is okay to sign other certificates. Then you process the other extensions. We did that. We check if everything's okay. Everything's okay. <laughs> and uh, we set C to the next certificate in path. So this is now our C certificate. And then now what we do is we go back to that. We are done with this and check is I N. This is I. And N was like the max path length at the beginning. Or in, and generally here in this algorithm, it's the path length uh, and it's three. So we don't go this way, we go this way because obviously this equation is, or this wooden check is true. So we go to the wrap up part. Now the wrap up part is down here. We check if explicit policy here, uh, we set it to the maximum of zero and the value from before minus one value from before is already zero, so we can't decrement it anymore. If policy constraints extension is included, then blah, blah, explicit policy is zero, but we have no policy constraints extension here, so we don't care. Then we set the working public key and the algorithm to the values in our C. This is our C, the red arrow is pointing at it. Recognize and process other extensions of C, there are no other extensions that we want to process. And now we check if the policy tree, tree we've been drawing all the time carefully is okay. Uh, we didn't draw it, so I guess it's okay. Uh, it's not null, so it's, that means it's okay. Do we have a user initial policy set? That would be this one. Uh, we have it, uh, no, but it's not any in this case. So we would check if the valid policy tree contains a path all the way down with one of these policies. But we don't do that in this video. And um, assuming all of this is okay and uh, the policy tree is okay, we just output this public key and the algorithm and the policy tree so, and the uh, public key parameters that are required so that we can, after validating the certificate or the trust chain, use the public key certified in this certificate and have it as a return value to, for example, verify a signature. Yeah. And that's it, and I hope um, this helped you understand this algorithm a bit better.